Hello and welcome to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nangia. Today we discuss a very, very interesting issue, which for a lot of people is something which they would like to know about the Digital Competition Law Bill. What does this bill entail? A, which all companies would it impact? Because that is what a lot of people would like to know. What are the provisions? And also because this is an introductory episode, we are going to do a lot more shows on this subject. That's why it's important to note that we will be covering the bird's eye view or the 30,000 feet view in the show. And of course, the specific issues that we have objections to or suggestions to give that will be part of the subsequent shows. In all probability, it seems like this bill would be tabled now in the monsoon session uh, is what we know. Uh, so there is still some time and some good discussions can happen on this subject. But given that this is a very, very interesting topic, we are devoting a couple of shows on this. May I introduce to you my panel today? Advocate Deeksha Manchanda is partner with Chandyogan Mahajan. She takes care of the competition law practice. Good to see you, Deeksha. She is uh, coming on Legally Speaking for the first time. Uh, welcome uh, on the show, Deeksha. And looking forward to some interesting insights from you. We have uh, Advocate Ravina Lalit, Senior Associate from Shardul Amarchand Bhargadas, joining you today. Uh, now, you've seen her earlier on the show. It's been a while, but of course, she's come early on the show. And uh, good to see you, Ravina. And looking forward to some interesting insights from you as well. At the outset, may I request, Deeksha, that in about the first two, three minutes, if you could uh, just, uh, just give a brief explainer about the bill. And since I'm not an expert on this subject, I think I'll go by what you and Ravina speak on this for the audience to know. What do you, Deeksha? Thank you so much for having me on the show, Tarun. Uh, I've been following this for a while now and I was uh, feeling quite left out at not being invited so far. So thanks for extending the invitation. And it's actually interesting to come here to talk about the Digital Competition Bill because I think this is a very, very significant uh, moment in the history of antitrust law. Uh, this is something that we've been seeing globally and now for the first time uh, we're we're looking at a version of what the law could look like for India. So what does this do? Uh, I think the easiest way to understand this would be to see how the law is right now and how does it change with the digital competition law. Currently, what we have is a reactive mechanism where if some companies violate provisions of the competition law, uh, somebody, anybody, or even the commission itself picks up that issue investigates and says, yes, you're right or you're wrong, and either penalizes you or penalizes you and asks you to make certain changes. Now, what the digital competition law does is it turns this entire procedure uh, sort of on its head. And this actually for anybody who's uh, listening in who has a competition law background uh, is, is a very massive shift because when you start competition law, the 101 is similar to criminal law. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, in criminal law, you have the concept that you're, uh, until the time you're proven guilty, you're not really guilty. So there's a presumption of innocence. In competition law uh, is, a, is, is basically a leeway for you to become as big as you want to be. Uh, Nobody is going to interfere with that. Be big, but don't abuse your bigness. Now, this law reverts and puts that standard also into a different context. What the law does is it says that there will be within digital markets, certain companies which will be designated as systemically significant digital enterprises. And for this conversation, I think we continue to call them SSDEs or if Ravina has come up with a better way of addressing it, maybe we can use that. But uh, you'll have these SSDs being designated and once you're designated as an SSDE, you have to comply with certain requirements that are laid down under the Act. But it doesn't just stop there. For each of the SSDEs, the CCI is going to come out with very bespoke kind of regulations to tell you what exactly you need to do and you don't need to do. So in very simple language, from being a reactive regime, we are moving into proactiveness. And we are moving into an, an arena where that entire investigation, et cetera, needn't be done. Some things are being presumed to be wrong, and you're required to change your practices with respect to those things. 
So legally, I think there is that change of how all of this was being procedurally carried out and perceived. Commercially, it's a big, big change because now you don't have to wait to see what happens if I do X, Y, and Z. Companies will be just prohibited from doing certain things. Tarun, you're mute. Just wanted to ask you the abbreviation that you said about uh, the cover. What was the abbreviation that you alluded to? SS. So this will be uh, all the companies which will be subject matter of the law will be called systemically significant digital enterprises. Systemically significant digital enterprises. Point well taken. I'll go to uh, advocate Ravina Lalit from Shardul Amarchan Mandan Das. Uh, Ravina, your opening comment on uh, the bill. Hi, hi. Thank you. It's great to be here with Deeksha. Um, so taking off from where she left, the idea is this law is going to become India's response to global ex-ante regulation on big tech companies, which are the intended subject matter of the bill. Um, these SDEs, as we termed it, if they provide certain core digital services, which is actually currently a list of services defined under the bill and, of course, can be revised and more services can be added. If they uh, provide one of the services, then they have to sort of perform certain set out obligations, which include, for example, FRAND obligations, anti-steering, um, limited use of data, um, etc., to make sure that they meet in a competitive manner, don't use their position in the market and entrenched position at that to a significant advantage for themselves and end up eliminating other players or disadvantaging other players across various um, positions in the market. So it's going to be um, quite a watershed moment for India. And it is our bill, um, unlike other regulations that are enforced currently in other parts of the world, is actually much broader in its scope. So these SSTs and the standard to designate them also, the thresholds are much lower than those in Europe, for example. And uh, the services, of course, are also defined in a broader manner. The CCI has broader powers as well to consider and look into additional factors. And um, the sort of scope that we're looking at is definitely much wider than a lot of other jurisdictions here. So it's going to be uh, game changing for several companies going forward. Point well taken. I'll take this to Diksha. One thing that uh, I would uh, like to know about the dominant players, the abbreviation that you use, which I'm still trying to remember, uh, if you can repeat that again when you give your answer. What my question to you would be from the point of view of the layman or the small businessman who would uh, use big platforms. For example, if I'm a hotel operator who operates on your platform and you've got the power uh, to show my presence or my room rates uh, 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 or, com or completely ignore them or maybe show me on the 1001th position so that normally people would scroll the first 100 to the first 50 names. Uh, this is a very common example. Or if I shift this uh, to uh, 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 online sellers, uh, am I looking at uh, my product not being shown or my product being shown uh, again at the 1050th number? So nobody scrolls down to my product. Everybody buys in the first 50, 100, 200 names. Uh, do you think these things which are the concerns of majority of the small businessmen of India are taken care of? That's a very interesting question, Tarun, because, uh, and, and I would love for Ravina also to come in and pain on this, but the way I'm reading the act I don't think any small business should go away with the impression that if they were at rank 50, the act brings them to rank 25 on any page. That's that's not what it does. The nature of the obligations that is being imposed and the relevant one here would be the FRAND obligation that Ravina referred to, which is that I have to treat all my business users in a fair, equitable manner. That uh, requirement is a very subjective requirement itself. So as a platform, somebody would say that I'm putting you at level 50 because I have applied a range of algorithmic factors which tell me that you deserve and merit that place and not the place at level 25. That defense or that argument continues to remain available even under this law. 
because if somebody is telling me i have to treat you in a fair equitable manner i would come back and say yes this is my list of things on the basis of which i rank and this ensures fairness and equity between all the participants so this is this is not the answer that perhaps the companies were looking for uh which i think always was a little more centered maybe around transparency maybe they didn't understand how these platforms were working i think a large part of the concerns stemmed from that uh this doesn't do anything to address that point well taken i'll take this answer to ravina lalit from sam um i think yeah i agree with diksha i don't think ranking in that sense um is something that we can really look forward to uh, being impacted but interestingly because you spoke of small sellers and you know mostly in india we look at a lot of online businesses run by small and medium enterprises there was a study conducted just right now in march 24 by the sia center and they actually found that msmes who were significantly benefiting from the from using targeted advertisements to reach their consumers were really not looking forward to this law and this bill because it significantly limits the way in which large um, SSTs right now can use data going forward and that would really impact their reach and the way that those customers can be targeted then through advertisements so they're actually um, they think that their business will be impacted negatively because they re re currently relies so significantly on these big tech companies for reaching end consumers that they won't be able to do so so it might actually have an adverse impact on them than what's being contemplated you're on mute tarun see ravina what i would like to know from you is that every market undergoes a process from fragmentation to consolidation and this is theory in market after my the developed countries have had that process of consolidation in india we see it today the the bigger player eats the small player and uh, even if it is loss making tries to appropriate market share until the point where we have very few players in each industry the telecom industry is case in point started from about 13 14 players down to three one is government so effectively two players three players uh this will eventually happen in every sector as a uh, big capital tries to dominate does this bill address the concerns of that consolidation process which is already underway in our market which is the indian market um i don't think while the intention of course is to address the consolidation problem and sort of take us back to two decades before where we had an mrtp act particularly to tackle consolidation um i don't think its impact would really we'll have to honestly wait and watch because the bill is very very broad right now we don't really know exactly what it would entail who would be captured and the way they they were going to administer services but a first brush and first read of it doesn't really indicate that it could um really dramatically or uh, you know suddenly sort of change market dynamics to such an extent where consolidation itself is solved for um, and in any case honestly digital markets unlike our regulated sectors or, or traditional sectors are very very dynamic you see new players come and they dethrone entrenched players through a click of a button through a new marketing scheme through a great offering etc we saw this with instagram we saw this with tiktok and you know the next change could come and that could happen automatically through the market process so one may or may not require such uh, ex ante regulation for these companies at this stage and maybe perhaps not for the indian business ecosystem which is relying on them to sort of promote msme businesses in any case point well taken i'll take the same question to diksha manchanda from chandigarh himachal thanks tarun uh, so i think on consolidation uh, and i completely agree with what ravina said we probably will not see changes that the bill makes to the market construct and the reason is that the bill is focused on a uh, downstream relationship so how does a market participant interact with uh, business users and end users how does the platform interact with people selling on the platform and people buying on the platform uh, this bill is not designed to uh, address the problems that happen with our we amazon or any other platform and its competitors so like if 
you know, Google is selling and Amazon is selling and Flipkart is selling, three companies are selling, how do they interact with each other? How can we open that markets? Do we want to open those markets? Do those markets need opening? Uh, those are not the issues that uh, this bill touches upon at all. It's it's completely limited to how I interact with uh, people in my down, downstream relationships. So we may not, we're not going to see any uh, difference in how the markets are largely constructed at the level of uh, bringing in or infusing competition. That's not what this bill seems to be designed to do. So as a competition lawyer who deals with these issues every day, any suggestions Deeksha, you want to give? Uh, if I'm giving a very, uh, let's go back to the book suggestion, it will be let's rethink about this bill. Uh, I think there's a very, very fundamental issue in introducing new regulation. When you're introducing new regulation, you need to identify the problem. Uh, you need to see what is a current toolkit to deal with that problem. Is the current toolkit sufficient? If not, what are the gaps? And how do I address those gaps? I think this thinking process somewhere down the line uh, is, has not been carried out uh, as well as it should have been for the bill of this nature, which has drastic implications for, for the entire ecosystem. As, as you know, the point Ravina made about MSMEs, uh, what we're dealing with is not individual companies, we're dealing with complex ecosystems. And if you start tinkering around how those ecosystems function, that could have significant detrimental impact on people who are part of that ecosystem. And the MSME study that she referred to brings that out, that when you tell people that they can't uh, you know, share data from one product to the other product, that just means it completely destroys the fabric of targeted advertising across these products. So I think there's a, there's a need to first think, why are we trying to bring in a law? Can we address it with the current uh, Competition Act uh, to me and probably you'll be discussing this in future discussions that you have about the DCA but to me it doesn't seem like this is really addressing the problem that the report identifies uh, which is uh, that the investigations in India take a very long time like I think that is a problem statement they come up with but this bill doesn't do anything to resolve that so my wish list as a competition lawyer would be let's go back to the book and rethink on whether we need this Point well taken. Um, I'll take this to Ravina Lalit from Shardul Amarchand Mangal Das. Ravina, two points. In India, for decades, you know, we tend to make badly drafted legislations which clogs the cloth with litigations. The most recent would be the Bihar Prohibition Law, which has clogged the courts with thousands and thousands of these liquor cases. Uh, my point being limited that uh, what, how would you? Assess this law from that standpoint. A is it will it lead to more and more litigation? Secondly, any suggestions that you would want to give on this law? Oh, sorry, the bill. It's still not a law. It's... Yeah, I think um, on the first point, I agree with Deeksha as well. This is not a bill which, for example, reduces the tendency to litigate. So, number one, the law, whenever enacted, will go hand in hand with the existing Competition Act. So, there will ongoing litigation will continue. Anybody designated as an SST for any of their core digital services provided here can continue to litigate um, those channels as well under the current regime, the way it happens, for example, appeal before the NCLAT and then to the Supreme Court. So litigation under this will also continue in the manner that it is. Um, don't see any reduction there, to be honest. Secondly, anyway, in terms of timelines, uh, because the law currently, the bill currently is very vague, we still have to wait for a round of consultations, which is on currently open till 15th May. And then we will again see, um, hopefully, consultations before various regulations are issued. So by the time it comes, to, comes into force and we see a little bit of clarity, it will take longer than expected. And current litigation, which would have otherwise been covered, perhaps under this bill, will continue to go on. Um, in terms of the changes required, I mean, just to add to Diksha, um, I think broadly, if you if if the government does intend to have an additional legislation like this, then the first thing to look at is whether the existing regulator has sufficient capacity and sufficient resources and expertise to even tackle such big tech companies, right? These are very technical sectors. Um, each service is provided in a very complicated manner through various tools and APIs, and therefore we need significant capacity and experts at the CCI to be able to tackle 
um, issues under the existing law first and let alone look into a new law and look at how things are being implemented under that, right? That's number one. I think um, the second thing is, as she said, the current toolkit might just be sufficient. You may not need such ex ante regulation if the current law and the remedies that the CCI is allowed to order are actually implemented in their spirit. So, for example, there is a section 13 in the current bill, which actually says that um, you should not allow third parties to um, limit, you should not limit third parties in any way from functioning. Um, which is so broad based that, you know, it could perhaps allow for things like side loading or for installation of app stores through an existing incumbent app store or any other means of limiting third parties if you provide a core digital service. This is actually a remedy that was contemplated by the CCI when it was looking at Google's Android practices. Now, that remedy is way before uh, this legislation even was contemplated or thought of at the time, right? So if those itself are implemented and those itself are seen through, through the existing law and the regime that there is, we might not even need regulation like this. And I think lastly, um, currently the way to designate these SSDs is also very broad. It's based on a financial and user-based test. If you meet that, the designation is confirmed. We don't even have a rebuttal mechanism here, which is what a lot of other jurisdictions provide. So that's something that the government should consider. They should consider adding consultations, et cetera, so that um, the business environment doesn't feel threatened by the law, if at all it is to come through, and it becomes a more collaborative process in general. Ravina, one quick follow-up question. What is the rebuttal mechanism? Um, so, for instance, even if you were to meet the thresholds, which are specified under the bill, uh, you can still come and argue and say, look, while I meet these thresholds, you, I am not the biggest or such an incumbent player here with such entrenched market power that you need to really regulate my services. Um, some companies have been successful in these rebuttals in the European Union, for example, for certain services that they provide, because there are other competing services which have enough market power to check and balance them in those areas. So that's not present currently in our law. Point well taken. Uh, we are almost out of time. One quick comment before we get in. A final concluding comment. I think uh, a lot of discussions have already happened uh, around this, but uh, I feel like there is a lot of theoretical base and discussion which is missing around the DCA. I think uh, part of the DCA might be driven by a lot of noise around this without really understanding whether it's required, if it's required, in what form it's required. And if we do decide to bring in how to make it more effective, uh, I think more and more discussion and deliberation till 15th May and after will be extremely helpful to try and fine tune this draft, uh, both in terms of seeing whether it is needed in the first place, but if it is needed, then fine tune it in terms of its effectiveness as well. Point well taken. Uh, Ravina, would you want to add something before we end the show? Um, just, I agree with Diksha. I hope that the public consultation process is taken seriously and yields to a result where we see whether this is required. And as she said, if required, the contours are specified. On a lighter Point note, Pavel, taken, we have a lot of Yes, please. On a lighter note, you never have lawyers agreeing with each other so much. So I guess this is like not a debatable issue at all. Yeah, point, point well taken because any uh, law which is not drafted well can lead to a lot of headache for lawyers also and litigants alike. So I think this involves us all as a community. Uh, appreciate uh, that uh, Ravina Lalit from Shardula Manchal Mangal Das, Diksha Manchanda from Chandra. The next show will be on this subject to be more broad based, where we will request the panelists to bring in at least two to three or five whatever it merits, suggestions as we, because I think there will be a round of consultations where stakeholders will give objections and suggestions to the bill. So I think based on that amendments or, you know, the draft, the bill draft would be changed. So maybe when we do take up this issue eight, nine days from now, maybe we should come up with some suggestions, which of course, through the media, we reach out to more people and they will then reach out to us. That will be much more exciting, but uh, appreciate your willingness and give us a bird's eye view and also questioning whether we actually need a bill on this at this point. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. Bye.